I work with a team of virtual reality and augmented reality developers. We create immersive 3D experiences for enterprise and for the gaming industry, training industry, marketing. Yeah, we're, we're pretty cool, I know. <laughs> uh, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Today, I'm here to talk to you about VR applications that we create that help people with disabilities. Did you know that funding for people with disabilities, for physical therapy, uh, drops off after they finish school? Um, when they're in the school system, PT, physical therapy, occupational therapy, that's a part of their everyday lives. But once they reach age 21, uh, that changes dramatically. Insurance companies see this as a service that's not, tends to not really be allowable because they can't really foresee a potential for improvement over time. Uh, due to lack of physical activity, inevitably over time, muscles can begin to atrophy. Uh, so even though they may not have a, most likely don't have a progressive disease or, or uh, a, a, any sort of prognosis for reduced ability over time, uh, that can be a result nonetheless, and it's a real problem. So that's where VR comes in. We were approached uh, by the John Paul II Center in Reading, Pennsylvania to create immersive art therapy programs. Uh, they were looking to create an experience an experience that people in their program most likely weren't going to be able to have in their lifetime. This idea originated because of a man who was in their program who was in a wheelchair. Um, he hadn't always been in a wheelchair, and when he was much younger, he used to love roller coasters, uh, and he wanted to experience that again. So they searched far and wide for wheelchair-accessible roller coasters, and the closest one was half the country away, and it just it was not feasible. It just wasn't going to happen. So that was what led them to consider VR, which ultimately led them to us. Participants in JP2's program are people with disabilities, intellectual disabilities, physical disabilities. Some are verbal, some are nonverbal, some are in wheelchairs, some are walking. Uh, there's a wide variety in levels of ability. Uh, to make the experience more personal and more familiar to them, our concept was to take artwork that the participants had created themselves and bring that into, an, a, into a 3D environment and give them a place to explore and create. You'll see here, this is my business partner, Chris. He's photographing a mosaic on the wall that, that they had created, and they had also done hot air balloon crafts that same day, and here's a staff member, JP2, that's a good sport. <laughs> and then you'll see in a moment here, so this is the finished product. <laughs> uh, this is the view from inside the headset. Now, those who have experienced VR know that uh, the screen recording is not really going to do it justice. You really need to have the headset for the full experience. This is Denise. She's a woman in her 30s with physical and uh, intellectual disabilities. This is the view from inside her headset. And she's, she can see herself there in the hot air balloon, and she's reaching out. And at that moment that she's reaching out to touch the hot air balloon, Chris is putting the construction paper uh, within reach to give her that tactile response. She doesn't have the ability to manipulate the controllers and create uh, artwork, but she's very engaged in the, the, the exploration and the, and, uh, of, the, of, the, of the program. Uh, so, for example, Chris would say, what's your favorite color? And she would say pink, and he would help her paint in pink, and she would laugh. And here she is, this uh, deep sea diving uh, and, 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 and reaching out for different underwater uh, objects, and Chris is putting the tactile uh, object within reach. So uh, how do we do it? We created that baseline of imagery. We cut up their artwork, layered it, brought it into our 3D programs, added lighting effects, motion effects, animation effects, music, to make it a real uh, immersive, really rich media experience for them. This is Jenna. She's a woman in her 20s with an intellectual disability. Now, she's, very, she's really excelled at the creative aspect of the program. She can uh, create, she can change tools, manipulate the controllers. She's changing colors, textures. She's very confident. She creates different artwork every time. Uh, the, 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 the staff at JP2 had no idea that she was going to be this engaged in, in VR, but once given the tools, she really blossomed. And it's just, it's really fun to watch her go, watch her create, and be confident and show those talents. So back to Denise for a second. Uh, we learned a lot about Denise that we didn't already know. 
uh, by observing her with VR. Uh, her, she definitely had the ability to uh, make the connection between the visual and the auditory and the, uh, the, the, she was making those connections. And why that's important is because for people who can't effectively communicate all the time, it's very difficult to know whether or not they're actually making those connections. But the observers, the, the staff of the program could observe that she, she definitely was indeed making those connections. So why is that important? Um, it, the world isn't always a safe place for people with disabilities. Uh, the people's ability to see and hear and make that connection and react, that's really important in our ability to gauge whether or not they're, they can stay safe. Uh, one of the best uses of VR is to uh, simulate dangerous, hazardous environments. Uh, the military uses it for that. You and I might not think of the crosswalk or the kitchen as a dangerous place, but for people with disabilities, that danger is very real. Um, so with a well-designed VR program, we can simulate the crosswalk on a busy street and oncoming traffic, and, and uh, by, by tracking direction of gaze and eye motion, we can determine whether or not they're really processing that that's oncoming traffic or if they're just turning their head back and forth. Are they looking ahead and seeing the walk signal? Are they processing that information that it's safe to walk or not? Uh, we, with, with, with a well-designed program, we can gauge safety skills, determine problem areas, and then work on building those skills. For parents of people with, uh, uh, parents of, 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 of children with disabilities, this could put them at ease knowing that their loved ones are becoming more independent. Bottom line, a program like this is going to uh, allow people to get active in their community sooner, which is really where they want to be. Um, so what else did we learn? There was obviously emotional benefits to the art therapy, uh, but there were physical benefits as well. The VR was active. It requires movement and encourages movement. Remember seeing Jenna whipping around with the controllers and creating. Not so focused on the physical challenges that it posed, but more focused on the, uh, the, the art, the creation, and the exploration, even you know, with Denise reaching out. Uh, so maybe, we talked a little bit earlier about insurance companies and the challenges of, uh, of, of uh, getting, getting funding or, or getting uh, physical therapy covered, Maybe if we could show measurable results over time, maybe we could convince insurance companies that there is a potential benefit. So, we're pursuing grants to create virtual reality physical therapy programs. To do this right, we need several things. Uh, partnership with certified physical therapists. We need to know that the programs that we're creating have value, that they're going to get the kind of results that we need to show improvement over time. Great user interface. We need to use our knowledge of gaming theory and game design to, to challenge people, to keep pushing them, get them, keep them reaching, uh, pushing them to achieve, and then reward them for doing so. Advanced, advanced hardware. Recent advancements in hardware. Uh, out of the box, we have the capability to measure uh, range of motion, distance, number of reps, uh, at a really affordable price point, a reasonable price point. Uh, and analytics, we need data. We need a lot of data. We need to be able to show a baseline for these individuals, and we need to show improvement over time. This is a prototype uh, for a virtual, uh, virtual reality physical therapy program for seniors. Um, you can see they're in a seated position. They can see their legs to ground them, reaching out with both hands, one hand up, down, left, right. Uh, by engaging their senses, you know, maybe borderline sensory overload, I'm not sure. Uh, we're, we're, we're able to make it fun, keep their mind off of the, the physical challenge, and, uh, and all the while we're measuring results. So what's next? We see two distinct paths to move forward. Uh, VR safety skills training for people with disabilities. We can uh, simulate everyday hazards, uh, measure safety skills, measure ability to stay safe. This is going to get people into their uh, active and into their communities sooner. 
and then also VR physical therapy uh, applications for multiple audiences, people with disabilities, seniors, post-op rehab. Uh, that we, we believe that with this technology, particularly for people with disabilities, adults with disabilities, this is a, an attainable, affordable means of physical therapy for a population that doesn't get adequate funding for physical therapy. Um, we believe that with this technology, we can show results, we can uh, address the insurance problem, and ultimately we can improve people's quality of life. Thank you.